So in part one of these uh, two videos within this course, I had previously gone in on the web GUI and got all the LDAP settings configured inside here under configured configuration active directory. You can see here I put the IP address of the AD server and I got the JID, I created the JID, the XMPP account name inside CMS using this field here in the Microsoft Active Directory, SAM account name, enveloped by dollar signs and then the at sign and the domain. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the API to achieve the same thing and this is especially important if you had multiple CMS servers, a cluster of them, scalable and resilient deployment model. Uh, in the lab exam, you got to watch out if they've supplied a credential and they've instructed you to use the API, then you'd have to, although you could still do it on the GUI, you won't get any points for it. So you've really got to watch out in the question if they've suggested to use the API, then go ahead and, and do it on the API and don't do it on the web GUI. If there's a choice, they have not su um, supplied any API credential, there's no mention of API then by all means you can do everything from the web GUI, which is what I've just done earlier. So let me just get rid of all these settings now because we're gonna do it on the on the actual API itself. Clearing every one of those fields. Then if I submit and then hit sync now, those users should be deleted. If I go to status users, the three users that were imported previously have now been deleted. So what we can do now is we can fire up Postman and this is a, a tool that's going to be supplied for you on the uh, PC that you're working on. Let's launch that and there's a few things that we'll need to do before we get going with the API. Okay, so once Postman is up and running, we want to go to disable certificate verification. So go to settings and then just turn that off, SSL certificate verification. Then we are going to, let's let's um, put our URL in that we're going to be using, using the web admin to capture, to, to put our post commands or get commands. So what is the access to the web admin, not the web bridge, which is using port 443, but web admin is HTTPS. We can then put the IP address of the CMS and then we specify port 8443 and then forward slash API slash V1. So everything that we do has to always have this prefix here, this, this string of the URL and then we can put our specific, um, the specific uh, API that we're actually adding or modifying after this API v1. So for example, if I put system status and then before I actually hit send, I'm gonna put authorization and I'm gonna use basic authentication and this is gonna be an API credential I need to create in the CMS. So let's go inside there and do a user list. Well, we've got the admin user, but if, you, if there's a separate user for API access, let's put user add API and the role is going to be API and I'll put API as the password. So user list and we can now see that API has been created with the API credential, sorry, the API role. And I made it very easy for myself. The password is also API. They'll probably give you th things like that, that this will, this will all be specified for you. Before we move on, let's go syslog follow and then let's enter API, API right there. And then I'm hitting send. And then what we can see, oh, it says there's some kind of problem. What have I done wrong? Eight, four. Yeah, so obviously I've got the the wrong port number there. It's, it's, it's eight, four, four, three, not four, three, three. So let me hit send again. And you see here, we got the 200 okay right there. And that's a success. And then we can see the version there is 229. And so great, this is an example. The first, maybe the first thing you could do is this get on the system status and verify that that's working. And now we can put our post commands in. And this is where we're gonna be doing exactly the same things I did over here 
I went to configuration before an Active Directory. The first thing then is the LDAP server. So LDAP server is the first thing, then we're gonna use something called LDAP mappings and then LDAP sources. So the documentation page, as a reminder, what you get inside the lab exam, if you go from Cisco's website, you can go to support and downloads and all products down there. So this is what you get. You can't navigate away from this. You have to then manually, you can't search either. So you have to manually step by step down the hierarchy, find the document, document that you're looking for. So conferencing, and then we're gonna have Cisco meeting server. Then inside there, we're gonna look at programming guides. And then we've got this API reference guide. Although it's 2.4 and 2.5, it's still going to work for 2.2, 2.3. So inside the API reference guide, we're going to be looking at chapter, I think it's at chapter 11, but you can just do a search, do a search on LDAP. And yes, chapter 11. And the very first thing we're going to be doing here is, so we could do a post, which is adding something. We could do a put, which is modifying something, get, you just see me do a get, that's retrieving some information and then delete, which is self-explanatory. So the idea then of the API is when you've got a cluster, you're modifying, you're, you're using the API to modif make your modifications because you obviously, you can not you can have multiple LDAP servers, for example, whereas on the GUI, you could only add one LDAP server. You could have multiple mappings and multiple, you know, re reference multiple core bridges, etc. So. API is very useful when you've got multiple CMSs, but it's not necessary to do in a single combine like we're doing right now. So this is really an FYI, but they may require you to use the API, even though you could do it from the GUI. So the first thing here is, so this is after the API V1, we're gonna be using LDAP servers, and then we're gonna be adding these these parameters here. The ones with, a, with an asterisk are mandatory. I mean, obviously username, password, typically is gonna be there as well. And then secure, we're gonna say that's it. So it's very similar to what we had in the GUI. If you look at what we had in the GUI, we had the same things over there, okay? So let me go and do that with the API. So we're gonna be removing then system status, and we're gonna be doing our first um, post. So we're gonna switch that over to post. And everything that we've, in terms of the authentication, it's still there, okay? So we don't have to do that, that's just a one-time thing. So we're gonna be adding LDAP servers and that's not case sensitive. We're gonna to go to body and we have to select this encoding type over here, that ready button. And then we will reference that the programming guide, the API reference guide. And we had server, we had, uh, no, we had address, sorry. We had port, we had username, we had password. None of these are case sensitive and secure. Now we're gonna be using false. The password's my password of my Active Directory. The username, this is not just administrator, remember, we have to go and find out that full string. So we can just go from here. This is my internal DNS right now and just type in ADSI edit. And then from there we can go pick one of the users. In fact, it's administrator, isn't it? Let's go to administrator, right click on there, properties, and then type in dist. You get down to distinguished name, and then you can copy that guy there. Return back, and then let's paste that in as the username. That looks good. Port number 389, if secure was used, it's 636. The IP address is right there. That looks good, let me hit send. And I'm looking for 200 okay. Oh, it says bad request, port. So it's port number, let's just reference the document there. Port number, you see there, not port. So it's caught that, so let's go back and fix it. Port number. Okay, now we see a 200 okay, which is good. Let's just do a get on that, just to verify we only have one LDAP server, not multiple. You should always do a get, right? We have got one, one LDAP server there. And we're gonna need this 
later on when we come to do our LDAP sources. So I'm going to just paste that into Notepad++. Okay, that looks good. And then we go on to the next thing, which is our mapping. So the mapping is what what fields are we using from the Active Directory to create our JID, to create our account name. So we're going to switch that over to post, and we're going to switch this over to LDAP mappings. If you do it a few times, you, you remember the uh, URI that you need over here. So if you are unfamiliar, it would just be the next chapter down. So you go down to um, LDAP uh, 11.2, and you've got LDAP mappings, and then we've got JID mapping, and all I'm using is JID mapping and name mapping. So I'm going to, this will make more sense in a short while. Let's go back in there. So JID mapping and name mapping is what we have to remember right now. So let's go to post and click on body. Now let's uncheck those, because we could delete them if we want, over here on the right hand side, delete them. But uh, I'm going to leave them in there, no, there's no real need for me to delete them. So JID mapping, and then we've got name mapping. Now, JID mapping, we're using that SAM account name inside the Active Directory. So that's just, although I'm an administrator, it's the same thing for um, for my users. They're in the same place. So if I put SAMA, SAMA, and let's just take that. So we this is case sensitive. Okay, everything, everything the values that we're using inside here are case sensitive. So we're going to be using a dollar sign and pasting the SAM account name, dollar. So it's the value of this account name field in the Active Directory, which would be equal to you know, hopefully HQ1 or HQ2, HQ3. And we're going to put an at sign there. And then we're going to be putting whatever our, the host portion of our FQDN or URI is, which is just CCI. This is my users. And this should match what we've got inside the XMPP domain on the GUI. So over here on the GUI. Under general, this XMPP domain over here is what we're going to be using on the right hand side of the at sign in the host portion. And this is where we've got that from. This is because my users are HQ1 at cciclabsit.com. Those are my users, hq2 at cciclabsit.com. So this is specified in the lab guide or the tasks. Okay, let's go back then. And I've made an error there, so let's just put the C back in there. So this would then be equal to hq1, hq2, 3 at cciclabsit.com. The name mapping is just a descriptive name. So I can, if you're calling me, you will see like a calling name, display name if you like. And we're using CN there, which is in lowercase. And that's, again, if you just go to CN inside the uh, internal DNS, you'd see that. Now, if we do a post, and we're looking at 200 OK, let's just do a get. We should then retrieve that, because we're going to need the mapping, just like we needed the server a bit earlier. We're going to need the mapping as well, right there. And the final thing then is LDAP sources. So we're going to switch over that mappings to LDAP sources, and then we go to body. Well, we're going to post first, then we go to body, and then let's uncheck JID mapping and name mapping. Okay, and then we go down here, and what are we going to be putting inside there? We need the API reference guide for that. This will be 11.3. LDAP sources, I think, did I put that in correctly? Let's just check, take a quick look at that. LDAP sources, yes. I had a feeling I put LDAP source, but it's sources. And then we've got to be putting in um, this the, the server, which is what I've got in Notepad, the mapping. So this is how, this is linking it all together, if you like. So the Active Directory server, what we're using inside the uh, Active Directory to create our account names. Or exit or jids, and then over here, where we, where we, where do we start looking? And then let's filter. So again, with a filter, just like I showed you on the web browser, if you don't put a filter, it'll import not just HQ one, two, and three. It'll import administrator and the names of different groups and the guest account. So we really do need a filter. If the users are not in a separate group, 
then you can you, you can just put Sam account name equals HQ star. That'll be my filter. So let's get that in there then. So server mapping base DN and then filter. For the filter, I'm just going to use then this field over here and put in equals HQ star because HQ1, HQ2, HQ3, they're the only thing, things that start with HQ inside my Active Directory. So it will only be those three users imported. The base DN is just, well, it's the same place as where the administrator is. So we can just take the right hand side there, not, not the CN equals administrator, but the remainder, that's where we're going to start looking. And the mapping, well, the mapping is taken over here, but in notepad, put that over there. And then let's go to our server and the servers over here as well. And let's just get that in there. If I click send, looking for the 200 okay. And then we can also do a get just to verify it's there. So in effect, we've now done exactly what we did from the web GUI, got the same thing. And now if we do a, on the, on the browser, let's do a sync. Obviously this time when we do a sync, we leave all the fields empty. All the fields are empty there. So let's do a sync now. And then let's just check if the users have been created. So I think obviously you're probably thinking doing it on the GUI is a lot easier, but beware, you know, do use both methods. So you should be equally familiar with the API way and also the the, um, the GUI access as well. So we mentioned earlier that chat is not working for either it's sort of conference calls, calling into spaces. I haven't talked about calling into spaces just yet, but for a call, point to point call between two WebRTC users, earlier in my previous video, I showed that chat was disabled. Now, if you go and just go to, um, in this API reference guide, search for message board. Okay, and then let's just take a look at another instance of that. And okay, that's not right. It's going to be in the call profile. So yeah, here we go in, in the call profiles. So we need to go and check or go and enable message board enabled equals true and apply this call profile to all our calls that we have. So the first thing we're going to do then is add a call profile with message board enabled equal to true. You don't need to worry about any of the other parameters because there's uh, no asterisk by there. So this is an instance where you have to use the API. You can't be doing this on the GUI. At least I don't think so. Um, let's then go to Postman. And we are going to do a post. And we're going to be adding call profiles, plural. And we are then going to just uncheck those guys down there. And it is called profiles, plural. Okay. And let's just take a, take that copy of that. Okay. And we're going to be putting that in the key and the value is going to be true. So let's do a post on that. And then let's do a get just to verify everything's looking good. It wouldn't complain by the way, if you got, if you fat fingered something, okay. Then we're going to take this core profile ID. We can look further or deeper into the core profile by in the URL there, just pasting the core profile ID after core profiles. And then we should be able to see message board enabled equal true. Okay. That looks fine. Now we need to make a modification on this on the system profile. So the system profile is visible from here. Now I don't think you will see anything. There's a default one. You don't actually see anything. So in fact, is that the right one? System profiles, plural. Okay, there's this 
it's there's nothing there it's empty but we can make a modification to this default system profile so it is there there's nothing it's got nothing inside there and so what we can do is we can do a put and then inside body we can specify the core profile so we're going to be putting in core profile and by the way this is all inside the the um, EAPR reference guide so let's go down here and just go to um, system profile okay and so this is basically it's globally there'll be we're doing something globally right now and then this is where we apply the core profile to system profiles okay so we've got core profile and it was core profile singular in this instance if you take a look at the uh, api reference guide just there and then it says paste that id which is from my previous get that i did on the core profiles so let's just put uh, let's put it so we're modifying that hence it's the put not a post and we've got the 200 okay now let's do a get on the system profiles and then we should be able to see that the global system profile has this core profile there now if i go and sign in and i'm going to be using site cpc and the internal dns so or you can use bpc or hqpc so down here let's go and sign in as hq1 at tciecollab.com cisco and then let's go to the other guy over here let's uh, sign out sign back in gonna make a call again I'm, I'm two HQ so let's make a call to one HQ and then we can once this call is established we can go to the chat and over here now it says it previously said it's disabled so I'm gonna put a test in there and we should be able to see that obviously on the other end over here and there we go we get test and I'll just test back and test back is coming there so that's a very good thing to enable to enable chat when you've got these calls between two WebRTC users the final thing in this particular video that I'm going to show you is remember from earlier we provided the web bridge that the web bridge has to connect with the call bridge there's that that link was established if you remember back here on this in the syslog we saw a, a link from the web bridge to the core bridge now on one box it doesn't you don't really feel the importance of that but imagine the web bridge is on the outside on the dmz you need to tell the web bridge where is the core bridge so when you've got different cms servers then it makes more sense but on a one box single combined deployment you don't really feel why you need to do that but we did we do have to do this because I remember the join call button didn't appear. So let me go and remove these two things. So this is again if I couldn't use the um, or I could not use the GUI multiple service for example, then I'm going to do it on API. Now with API, then I'm going to search for web bridges. So let's go down here and then let's put in my search web bridges one word and web, so that's just before the LDAP chapter 10.8 and we're going to be using just web bridges with URL that's all we have to do okay so right now I think with the web bridges removed let's see if I'm right there the join call button may have gone by now let's go and check that okay there's no join call button there okay so let me just verify that join.cci.collapser.com yeah the join join call button's gone this is because the web bridge does not know where the core bridge is 
So we did that in the GUI beforehand. Now we're going to be doing it in the API. And so down here, we're going to be adding web bridges as specified in the API reference guide. And then we're going to be adding URL. So this is the other, way, the other way around from what I said before. The core bridge needs to be aware of the web bridge. So we're here, we're configuring the core bridge to know where the web bridge is. So the web bridge, remember, is our uh, port 443. We don't need to specify HTTPS, but I, I'm going to do that. And then we could either use the join URL or we can just put in the IP address of CMS because the web bridge and, co and core bridge are on the same virtual machine. Let's hit send. Okay, 200, okay. But it's interesting to note that everything we do in the GUI, you can't retrieve those details from the API, okay? So if I add something in the API, it doesn't show up in the GUI. If I add something in the GUI, it doesn't show up inside the API either. Okay, so now if I go back, I should be able to see this join core button. There it is. This, this indicates then you've got the trust bundle set. The web bridge is trusting the core bridge, and then the core bridge and web bridge are aware of each other. So it doesn't matter whether you do that in the GUI or in the uh, API, but you have to do it in one place or the other, or you can do it in both places as well. So that's just the final thing on the API that we're going to be working with in this video. And in the next video in this series, we're going to be talking about spaces and uh, core rules and stuff like that.